Welcome to the Infamous Hour Live here at Facebook.com slash BoomBap Nation, of course, Roku, and our loyal fan base who has been holding us down the whole pandemic. But we are back outside. We're having a great time. We're almost keeping the hip hop. And of course, I got my guy on the right side, my co host, Tom Vieira, which is the first time I actually said that you're correct in a long time. Shout out to you, bro. Shout out to everybody who's tuned in there, man. Guys, feel free to drop some comments below. Keep them safe, keep them clean, you know, we're listening. And uh, yeah, yeah, we definitely take any questions, questions throughout the show, so looking forward to getting them. Yeah, most definitely. So, obviously, we're going to have an amazing series here. Um, we actually have some pre recorded stuff that we're going to be doing. And I got that opportunity to go to Quad Studio with the young gentleman uh, to my right who seems to not age. <laughs> I swear. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a, no, seriously. <laughs> all the Maggie's rappers don't age, they yeah. all look the same. Fact. He looked at the shit and he did it. I don't look at him. And he's fine. And he's still here. 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 So, I went to all the Sissy Movies part and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. So, I enjoyed it. But the thing that I enjoyed the most was the Gigi Fest. Oh, okay. The gift that, the gift that, and that was very, very, very creative marketing because there was something in the gift bag that we could have used now as an example. There was a, a grinder in it, and I actually got uh, one more gift here. I got it. Almost to me. Still got it. Yes. It was me and one more side and side too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so um, talk about the new singles that you got. Now, since they ain't dope, right? It's been a while. I'm gonna make you want to come back and get some fans or something like that. It is crazy, bro. Like, I, like I'm telling people, you know, you know, go to the store to play. You know, like, I ain't right to do this new movie, so I'm mm-hmm. not so sure. Like I was saying, not too long ago, kind of all came out of the blue. I was totally with my head in the other things in life, but. I guess it was just time to, you know, do something. Yeah. So I felt good. Um, I did the Drink Champs episode. Shout out to Nori. Shout out to Mr. Lee, yeah. the whole, you know, Drink Champs staff. But after I did that, it kind of gave me the opportunity to do a couple of things. And me and Nori and Capone had like a really long talk. And after I had that talk, I was like, all right, yeah, let's go to work. You know, so here we are, and we did Smoke. That's the first single produced by Self Service and my man, who else? They co produced. Shout out to Self Service. Shout out to, yeah, shout out to who else? And it's dope, bro. Like everything I'm doing with the project thus far, it's like just add water. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not fighting to marry the tracks. It's not, it's just all okay unfolding. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm just enjoying the process. I'm enjoying getting ready to get back out here to the world and giving them this 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 project. You know? Facts. And yeah. you mentioned before, before uh, the interview we were talking, you mentioned you took a 20-year break. And here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you say you took a 20-year break, but you weren't forgotten. You see, you were brought up in a lot of conversations. I like, appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, like when they would talk about like Bad Boy, Diddy's whole story, you would get brought up. Mm-hmm. Cause we know you worked with Diddy. Yeah, shout but, out. And the Diddy. thing is, whenever they just mention New York MCs in general, your name will get brought up in the conversation. So it's like you weren't making music, you were doing like little side projects at mm-hmm. the time, but you weren't forgotten. I appreciate that. That made me feel good, bro. Like yeah. just to even be able to 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 for someone to tell you that you're still a part of conversations that currently occur. So. I can't thank the supporters out here in the world enough. You know, they changed my life, and they made it worthwhile. So Excellent. that's cool. Yeah, so the real question is, what were you doing all these years? D- enjoying life. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's what's up. Nah, like, you know, I, I just got to the point, I think, where I became disenchanted with music. Mm. Yeah. You know, and I, I just got to the point where, you know, if you do anything too fast in life, I think you you run the risk of what happens when you don't digest what's occurring. And everything with me happened really quick overnight. I was real young. I was like 17, going on 18 when I signed my first deal. 
and it all just took off like a rocket ship, but I never had the opportunity to really sit there and be like, okay, this is what's happening, this is what's going on. How do you feel about it? How are you doing dealing with it? So I just got to the point where I was like, yo, let me slide off and bow out gracefully. And then initially I hadn't intended for it to be that long, but it's just funny where life takes you, you know. So I settled into not being a part of the amusement park, you know, and I got married, I had my children, I started a business, and okay. that pretty much became, you know, my emphasis on things and where I was put in life, you know. I always kind of in the back of my head was like, yeah, well, maybe one day I'll go back to doing music or whatever. But I just wanted to take that time to just be like, all right, if I didn't have my my superhero outfit on, what would life be like? And that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I can imagine that you had a lot of pressure um, coming out, especially being at this, uh, a young age, but you were being billed as the guy. You know what I'm saying? And it, and it, yeah. it felt that way in New York. Then you kind of just disappeared, as you said, to go, you know, go to the ventures of life. But yeah. how was that pressure with the high expectations of what people were expecting for your career? Um... I mean, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't a lot. But again, I think one of the, ironically, one of my saving graces was that I was naive to so many things. And I was still young and I still had a bit of that youthful impetuousness in me where, like, you know, no matter what came, I would just deal with it. It doesn't mean that I would analyze it and I would take it, you know, in its truest definition of what it was. I would just find ways to get through it. But the pressure was there. It was there. You know, like, it wasn't easy. Like, you know, you wake up and, you know, you open a magazine up and they, like, calling you, like, the second coming and all of that. And, you know, the comparisons to, to some of the people that people, like, yo, you know, you like Rakim or you, you Nas. And, you know, so I was being compared to really, like, titans in the game. But I'm still a child, mm. so I would be lying if I didn't say the pressure wasn't extreme and it wasn't crazy and that I didn't feel like it was a lot to live up to. But again, like I said, I didn't really have anybody to bounce that off of to, to say, like, yo, this is a lot. You know, so when I did get my little break, you know, I just was like, all right, I'm out. I'll come back if I feel like it, you know, and that was it. That was it. What are your early singles of? It was actually one of the first songs I ever remember hearing as I started to listen to hip hop. Mm. Nothing moved but the money. That's what's up. <laughs> now, <laughs> I, I can honestly say this: you have something that most people can't brag about. The music video is a uh, shot in that like uh, late '90s style, mm -hmm. the fisheye lens. Mm -hmm. You know the the real oversaturated colors. Mm -hmm. Like honestly, only a handful of people could say that. Like like the Bad Boy Camp, Foxy Brown, Jay Z, yeah. Missy Elliott, and you. Yeah, like you guys shot these videos like like um, I forgot who directed that video. Well, I know it wasn't Hype Williams. That one was Christopher Erskine. Yes, but it, it's funny because like my first video ever was Hype Williams. Like he did yeah. shit's real. Yeah, yeah. And then he did Master I See. So okay. I was just very fortunate, and I would just somehow, some way, whatever it is, like it would just be like, okay. You, Want to live a dream? Okay, here, here's the here, live this. So it would always happen that way with me. And like, like I was laughing. Somebody had called me like the Forrest Gump of hip hop, and I just started <laughs> laughing because I was like, yeah, that's about right. <clears throat> Pardon me, but um, yeah, I was fortunate enough to work with like good people like Hype and Christopher Erskine and and other people. Shout out to Diane Martel. So it was just. It was just there, you know, and I, I, I just somehow, some way, at little stages, ended up, you know, working with these people, and it was extraordinary. Yeah, um, you know, people hear this new record, you, you've maintained your, mm. your level of lyricism, like I push like it. When I heard, I was like, oh, he's back. He's he ain't, he ain't lose a step. Nah. You know what I mean, he ain't lose a step. But, <laughs> but having taken so much time off, like, how do you stay sharp as an MC? Because obviously, you have the competitive nature of consistently releasing. Mm -hmm. You also have the natural, organic being around other MCs in the mm -hmm. sense, like you said, you was you know behind the scenes doing business. So how does your pen stay sharp throughout this time? I just think, boy, if it's in you, it's in you. So it's not like when I did take a break from it, it's not like I wouldn't still be at home and and hear something that's fire, and I wouldn't 
just start oh and start rhyming and you know and then also just as a personality i was never the individual that wanted to stay trapped in a box like the okay i'm from this era so let me stay in that era i never looked at it that way i always looked at it like okay all right now the weed shit is popping cool let me see what that's about oh, okay now the drake shit is popping let me see what that's about Okay, little TJ and them is popping. Let me see what that is. So I always would be up on what was going on. And then, you know, I just feel like if you're a true creative, you never really stop creating. You know, the world might not see you doing that, but if it's part of your DNA, if it's part of your, your, your blood, your oxygen, your soul, you do it. You just do it because it's part of you. So I didn't look at it in terms of I have to stay sharp. I just looked at it more like, okay, how can I have fun picking up new styles and developing a new delivery? And, okay, these beats have triple hi-hats. Let me see how I could do on that tempo or that bounce. And that's the fun. That's the fun in being able to paint a picture or, or write a poem or, or, or do a dance. That's, that's what it is. You know, so it's fair to say that you remained a fan of the, the rap the game and, and a student of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I don't think there was ever a point where I wasn't a fan of hip-hop. There the damn sure wasn't a point where I wasn't a fan of it. I might have got, like I said, disenchanted with it. Mm -hmm. But you can never, if it's you, it's you. Facts. You know, so. And, like, like because of hip-hop, it's taking you many different places. Oh, yeah. You, you've said, um, you, you mentioned to me that you've been to Europe. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Like, and like and you, from from the stories I gathered, you were you were the man out there in Europe. Yeah, I mean, shout out Team Elite. We was talking about yeah. earlier. We were talking about like Copenhagen, Denmark. You know, Christiania. There's, I've been fortunate enough to, like I said, when I was a kid, I would have never imagined that I would have been traveling the U.S., let alone the world. Yeah. So. I've been lucky enough to, to go to these places like Japan and, and France and Israel and Bahamas, Christiania, Copenhagen, Sweden. And it's, when I go, like, I, you know, like I got people in these places that are family to me. Now, you know, so it's just part of absorbing the experience and being grateful that, you know, you can even have those experiences. So. Yeah, man. I, my passport is it's pretty stamped, stamped up. up. All right. Yeah. <laughs> when, when, when you go back and you look at your discography, because mm -hmm. obviously, you know, hip hop fans naturally create, uh, equate the best album with the first album. Mm -hmm. right? So, but, you know, 20 years down the line, if someone was to go back and look at your, the Mike Geronimo catalog, which is the album that you would want them to go to? They'd be like, all right, my, my pen game was the sharpest, the production was the sharpest, maybe the message was different. Oh, what I'm working on now. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Like, my, I, I was like, um, I told my wife, I was like, I think I'm a Florida natural. And then she was like, what? I was like, yeah, I think I'm a Florida natural. And then, like, maybe three weeks later, we were both listening to some of the songs. And she was like, babe, yeah, I think you're right. I think you're a Florida natural. So I would say this one I'm working on. The natural is always going to be near and dear to me course, because... Yeah. That's how I came into the game, and that's that part where you don't know all the things that come with music. You're just going and doing it, so you don't know the industry, and you don't know all the things that make you know the wheels turn. So it'll always be a soft spot in my heart for the natural, but with that being said, nah, what I'm working on now, bro. Yeah. Fire. Yeah, Fire. exactly. <laughs> so over yeah. at Shade Forty Five, the fan base there is like mostly like uh, purists of like that boom bap sound. Yeah. So when they when they see your name, when they see this new music come out from you, uh -huh. they're, they're gonna associate that with like an older sound. Like they they're, they're gonna go, they're gonna go. Oh, we hope to get back that ninety eight Mike yeah. Geronimo. I mean, yeah, and, they, and and you can't like I said, you can't knock people for that mm -hmm. because I think we're artists. Sometimes uh, what we sometimes forget is. We provide the soundtrack to people's lives. Yeah, word. You know, so the natural has played at someone's graduation or at when they got their first car or when they got their first job or 
their first breakup or whatever it is. So in all these songs, they're part of the soundtrack of moments that happen with individuals. So it's only natural, no pun intended, for people to say, well, that reminds me of this and that moment in my life is pristine, it's pure, it doesn't change. So I'd appreciate it if you just could remind me of that yeah. moment. And you can't knock people for that. That's a fact. You know, but it's like anything else. I do believe that what I'm working on now has elements of all that. Like it has its nostalgia. It has its, um, like what I call the pillars. Yeah. You know, the foundations. But then it also has a lot of stuff where I know people is going to be like, what? I ain't even know he do all of that. Say word. That's, that's crazy. You know, so like I said, I'm trying to incorporate all those things that influence me. And I'm trying to incorporate all the ways that I feel when I make music. And also take into consideration how the fans feel. And, you know. They'll, they'll, they, you know, if they like it, they'll like it, you know. And everything ain't for everybody. Everybody ain't for everything. But at the end of the day, as long as you do what's true, you'll be all right. So you know, it's interesting right. you say that because when I was at the uh, the Quad Studio event, mm -hmm. I heard different Mike Geronimo that I wasn't expecting. For example, you, you popped out a drill record. Yeah. And I, I just really like sitting there. I just really wasn't <laughs> expecting. <laughs> well, I wasn't. Round of applause. So you the one who said we don't age. So I know, I'm, I'm no, still like, I just, I just wasn't I'm really 16, bro. I'm sick <laughs> of your bad <imagination. laughs> I, I wasn't expecting it, but, you know, is it a risk to kind of create a record like that? Um, you know, be, because people equate you uh -huh. in, in a way like you're stepping outside the box, you know uh -huh. what I mean? Um, but is it a risk to kind of... Uh, I mean, if you... Something? I guess if you looked at it from the from the standpoint of of an industrial standpoint, meaning like if you were looking at it in terms of okay, you're this, and you're Coca-Cola, and you're red, and you have a white swirl on you, and you're just supposed to be Coca-Cola. and You can't do too much to alter the flavor, to use the analogy. Um, so I guess in that sense, you could view it as a risk, but I think the best artists in the world are those that are like, man, fuck risk, bro. Yeah. You know, and if you feel right about it, if you feel right, like what I do say to myself is I'll know as an artist when I'm taking a, a leap mm -hmm. and I'm going somewhere that people wouldn't expect me. So I just tell myself, nigga, if you're going to take a leap, do it like you mean it. Because mm -hmm. if you take this leap and you don't mean it, they're going to know you didn't mean it. Yeah. They're going to know you just took it to took it. But if you do it with an intent of what you truly felt when you heard the beat, mm -hmm. They they gonna ride with you. Yeah, yeah. I seen it one time. Uh, Will Smith, uh, when he was uh, jumping out of a helicopter, he was talking about on the other side of fear is a reward, and you may not know what that reward is. So in this situation, mm -hmm. it's kind of the same because maybe the fans will get to interact with a new sound that they're not accustomed to, right? Right. Because the, the, the nineties style fans, and don't kill me in the comments, please. But the nineties style fans <laughs> are basically in the nineties because when terrestrial radio changed over, FM mm -hmm. radio changed over, they kind of cut them out. Yeah. So they have a tendency of going like two thousand three, maybe two thousand five. And that's the cut. That. Off, and, and that's the and that's the cutoff. But um, I mean, in general, what, what what can the fans expect in general on this new project? You're still working on it. You're still creating. I'm yeah, sure. I mean, there's a lot of like I said. I'm I really am trying to incorporate all those things that influence me. So you know, I have my I know I'm known for my bar game and all of that. Like Sham said, shout out Shampoo, my shout brother. Shampoo, my um, guy. YVS, we in here. Q and B, what's <laughs> up? We in here. Nah, but, you know, so I, I definitely know that, it, like Sham says, you got to do your bar lord. You were bar lord. So there's plenty of bar lord stuff there. Um, people say that they like my ability to tell stories through music. So there's, there's stories that are told. Um, I got the influence of the queen sound, like the, the, the quintessential queen sound, but then also... I'm a big rock fan. I grew up listening to Van Halen and, and Led Zeppelin and Def Leppard and, and stuff like that. So there's those influences. There's I listen to trap. I listen to drill. You know, I got family in Florida. I got family in North Carolina. I got family in L.A. I got family in Miami. So there's those influences. And then there's just, yo, how do you feel? How would you feel when you woke up? 
Like, I'm real big on, you just said something about fear. And I think one of the biggest things I worked on as an individual was combating my fears or combating my um, my inclination to be in fear. Right, right. And so once I started working on that, it's kind of like you could walk into a tunnel to get to the other side. And before you walk through it, you could be scared to death because you don't know what's going to pop out. You don't know the length of your walk. Mm -hmm. But you could let all of that hinder you from walking through the tunnel. You're never going to know what's on the other side until you walk. And even after you see something that might cause alarm, it might not necessarily be anything to be scared of. And then if it is something to be scared of, you got another choice. Either yeah. you be scared of it or make it scared or of you. Or face it head on. Or face it head on. So that's just the mantra that I adopt, adapted rather to everything. And like I said, I'm aware when I'm taking a leap and when I know it might be a stretch of what an expectation is. But if you do it with a purity and a sincerity, and if it sounds right, then it was okay for you to take the leap. You made it through the tunnel. Yeah, I wouldn't know if I didn't take that leap. Yeah. You feel what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? So it's going to be worth it, man. Believe me. We're definitely excited. Yeah. And uh, the next generation is going to be listening to this too. And they, they're, yeah. their generation, they appreciate the lyricism. And they got this thing out there called TikTok where, you know, the yeah. kids... You know, they like that drill <laughs> sound. This thing called this TikTok. Thing called TikTok. Like, 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 I'm a thousand. I'm not that. <laughs> Damn. Like, they, they do these viral dances. I got a TikTok. I'm, yeah. on, I'm on the talk. Yeah. <laughs> so how would that make you feel if, like, your song went viral on TikTok? I would love that. Yeah? I would love that. Yeah, shout out my man, Reezy Renegade. He's, like, one of the producers on the yeah. project. But he's, like, really big on TikTok. Like, he did a song called Lottery, and it took off. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's one of the producers on the project we doing now. And it's funny, we was talking about that. He's like, yo, we're going to make you go viral. I was like, by all means. God. Facts. Why would you ever be mad about more people enjoying you? <clears throat> you know, so I don't see it that way. And then, too, I think there's so much on the emphasis, especially when it comes to my era. Like, there's all this divisiveness and there's this imaginary line that everyone draws. And they're like, okay. You're over 40, so you stop here. Who made that rule, bro? Or, or, or like, who's the person that was like, yo, okay, so, you know, you, you from the 90s ever, so, yo, don't check Lil Dirk shit out at all. Like, nigga, what? Is, is it fire? Yeah, all right, then I'm playing it in my truck. End yeah. the story. You know, you only as young or as old as you allow yourself to be. And exactly. I was always, like I said, I've always been a, a free-spirited now person. You know, so that's what I do, bro. And I don't worry so much about perceptions or or expectations or, especially after taking a break of 20 years, you, you're not worried about shit after you took a break for 20 years. Yeah, <laughs> you're just yeah. not, you know, so. Yeah. It's good. It's in God's hands. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? But I don't doubt God's hands at all. That's a fact. They yeah. never let me down. Yeah. Well, one, one of the amazing things now in 2021 is that you can take a 20-year a break. Mm -hmm. You can re-engage with your fans directly. Yeah. I'm sure you enjoy that process, right? Being able I to love get to them directly. Yeah. Like, it's amazing to be able to, to talk to people all over the planet. You know, I get bombarded with emails and, and DMs and stuff every day. And you know, I have people tell me stuff like... This helped me get home from Afghanistan. I played this when I was in Iraq doing my tour. I grew up listening to this in London. And those things are moving. You know, those things will bring a tear to your eye. So it's like, I just enjoy a lot of the abilities that we have now, the capabilities that exist that we did not have when I first came out. So to be able to interact with everyone is it's amazing, bro. You know, the trolls is one thing, but I don't really get too much troll stuff, so I'm not, you know, I enjoy it. I like where we are. I like where we are. Over the years, were you getting recognized a lot during your travels? Enough, enough. Like, I would, like when I started my business, it would be funny because I would go to do, you know, like installations at people's houses, and I might be in, like, East New York or something, and it'd be like, like looking like, 
Then they was, yo, you such and such. I'd be like, yeah, what's up? <laughs> yo, my boy, yo, come in, yo, come here, son. Yo, you ain't never gonna believe. Yo, this nigga might you out about putting a lock on my door, bro. Yo. I had the whole projects outside. And I'd just be able to enjoy myself with people. They'd be like, yo, so so yo, Lord, you, you could put cameras up and rap. Uh apparently, nigga, yeah. I'm here. <laughs> You know Wait, I mean? so you pull up the the, the businesses because it's like your, your business, yeah. and you install the cameras, and right? It, like bugged out, like right? It's, uh, and they'll bug out to be like, "Yo, Mike Geronimo was on a ladder, like drilling." <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, that's the only way you can install it is getting on the ladder <laughs> and drilling." And then they, but you know, like in the beginning, I would say it was tough because I I had that, like I call it rapper ego. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. So. Like, I did, like, a year and a half apprenticeship from, shout out my brother, Asi, I love you, bro. But he changed my life. He's the one who showed me, you know, the industry that I got into. Um, So I was in this little red smart car with him, riding through Manhattan, and people would be staring. They'd be like, yo, that look like Mike Geronimo in this little ass car, bro. Like, <laughs> And I would just, you know, and in the beginning, you know, I'd be like, yo, like you can't be in a spot, and then I would have to tell my ego, like nigga, shut up, bro. Take yeah, it's a part of life. You know what I mean? Like if you just hang in and learn this, and if you just learn how to just be quiet for a minute and let you know the rest of Mike handle things, it'll turn out okay. Yeah. And it did. You know what I mean? And like I said, I, I love the fact that. You know, I could either send someone from my staff to do something, or if I don't want to do that, if I personally want to go out, I will, and I'll go anywhere. And then when people see that, you you know, you you do the same things they do, they get a kick out of it. Yeah. You know, so. Being personal, being, being direct. Yeah, yeah, yeah bro. So I, 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 get, I, get, I have a blast, bro. I have a blast with it. Facts. I personally find that a little funny because um in that song nothing moves but the money one of your lyrics is like you got it on lock like an ATM. How weird is that? <laughs> <laughs> and now I could like break into the ATM if I was, if I wanted to, which right. is crazy. Even you know, not that I do that. If you want to move, my drive We're good. <laughs> That's We're good. Dope. Yeah, yeah. He, he got the line. Um, you know, it's funny that you mentioned that you you like different uh genres of music because. Mm-hmm. TVT wasn't just hip hop, right? No, uh, like not Nine at Inch all. Nails was over there, right? So that yeah. that kind of shout out to Trent Reznor. It had to kind of feel a perfect fit being there. And then, and then how did you actually sign the, the, uh, to to that label? It was well, mainly it was Gotti. Shout out to Irv Gotti because all the labels were going to Irv, and I think it that so Irv was like the liaison in a sense because he was kind of pinging guys at different labels and you know what I'm saying? yeah, Irv. and he was the one basically. If it wasn't for Irv, I wouldn't be here. Because he was the one who was like, yo, I got a studio. I think you should come and, and you know, I want to record you. And at first I was like, eh, whatever. But he was persistent and I went. And he saw something in me that I did not see in myself. And it's funny because, like, I had grown up with Large Professor. That's, like, one of the first people I literally knew coming outside of my apartment building. Out of, out of my door, rather. So I would go to large crib all the time. I would be there, you know, like Nas and Akinelli and, and Gangstar and, and Pete Rock and, and Tribe Called Quest. And everybody would come to his crib and I'd just be a shorty rolling weed, just watching, looking, observing, DJing. But even then, it didn't occur to me to be like, yo, what do you want to do in life? You want to ride? Even when I did sign a deal, I really never envisioned becoming an artist like I just knew that I liked to rap, to rap. and I liked to DJ but I didn't really think that that was gonna dictate the course of my life yeah. you know so at that time Irv had gone a step further and he was like all right yo we're not waiting I'm gonna press this shit up and we press this rail up and then we went to all the DJs and all the radio stations and all that shit and it had got to the the point where there was like a I think a three way bidding war between like uh, TVT, um, Wild Pitch, and I can't remember the third label. I want to say Loud. It could have possibly been, but we had to go sit and meet with all of them. And when I went to TVT and I met Steve Gottlieb, it just felt good. We had a good conversation. 
Uh, they explained to me I would be like the first rapper they ever signed. And yeah. They were opening another division of TVT and Irv was like, that's good for you because you'll be the first one. And, Focal point. Right. And yeah. so it just felt good. And like, you know, I was like, okay, I see they do all of this soundtrack stuff and all of that. Yeah. And, you know, I knew they had like. Trent Reznor and they had Seven Dust and they had a super diverse. So. Yeah, and they weren't known for hip hop. They weren't, so. not at all. They were actually more asserted in the alternative rock um, aspect of of music. Like in that genre, in that field, they were pretty asserted. And then aside from that, like Steve owned all of the old soundtracks, like from the Jetsons to the Munsters to any TV show that you could think of. He owned that music. So they primarily were, you know, they would get their revenue from licensing out those songs or from alternative music. And rap was completely, you know, they didn't know it. It was yeah. like the moon to them. Yeah. But it felt good, and so I got on board. And know. it worked? For the most part, yeah. yeah. I think it worked. For the most part, I think so, too. I mean, it, it may not have been picture perfect, but, I mean, a lot of stuff we had to learn on the fly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, whatever can happen will, but... And it's hip-hop. I think we all kind of learn things on the fly. Yeah, like, like, even right we now did. we're learning and adjusting and dealing even with still, the equipment and, you exactly. know, and conversation. Exactly. So, I, I mean, regardless to all of that, I had an amazing experience with them. Uh, I have love for everybody that was there to this day. Uh, shout out to Steve. Love you. You know, Steve was... At one point, almost like another dad to me, mm -hmm. you know, so I would never, ever forget nor want to replace those days of my life. They were amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Mike, you mentioned um, that you're like really into rock music. Yeah. A, a lot. There's like this conversation that happens in rock music because uh, it's like they get upset that like these rappers like LL Cool J and Notorious B.I.G., make it into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh -huh. And then they, they start coming up with debates like, well, how come Iron Maiden is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but yet these rappers are? I mean, that, but that, that could easily be shot down. Look how long it took them to put LL there. So it's not as though Iron Maiden won't be recognized one day. And, you know, and, and let's face it, Iron Maiden wasn't a Led Zeppelin. They were Iron Maiden. They have their, their thing, not to discredit them. I mean, there wouldn't be an Ozzy without an Iron Maiden, and a, you know, or and a Black Sabbath. Like, that all came from that. And so I just think it's more so people getting caught up in the fact that it's called the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And I think if people step outside of that and they realize, okay, they named this shit like a kabillion years ago. When the only dominant <laughs> genre of music that gave you recognition, it, 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 it's, it, it's okay. you know, you know that reminds right. me of it reminds me of our uh, of the people that we pay for like the um uh, like a homeowners association, like right? They, like they're in like the, the nineteen like sixties still, like you have a yeah. pool, no Airbnb. I'm like I pay mortgage, right? Yeah, like, yeah, like, like, like what's up? Yeah. yeah, like you do know that there's digital watching yeah, yeah, yeah. shit now, <laughs> and you be having to do, but again with people, yo man. I just learned, like, with people, bro, you got to try to not be judgmental in the sense of, like, this argument people would form about, you know, well, why yeah, yeah. isn't such and such? That's their opinion, man. Mm -hmm. And that's all, and they entitled to that, and it don't mean that, the, that that's how it has to end up being, but I just be like, all right, cool, that's how you feel, that's how you feel. It ain't going to stop them from putting Jay-Z in it. You know, so you still be mad about Iron Maiden after Jay-Z gets placed in it, you know? And then when Iron Maiden gets placed in it, guess what? You can have a party at your house. Yeah. <laughs> and the stove, you know? Big facts. So, That's hilarious. But, I mean, music don't have a color. Yeah. It never did. You understand what I'm saying? Music is the only language that... Everyone speaks. Everyone speaks. You know, and it, and it was never, ever written. It's not the musicians who said, okay, this guitar and these drums are only meant for these people that look like this. They didn't say that. The people who sold that music said that. It's not like when Muddy Waters came out and he was the, the only jazz musician at that time playing R&B the way he did. 
he didn't label it colored music. Mm -hmm. The people who sold that music said, well, we're calling this colored juke joint music. True. You understand what I'm saying? So it's never us, the creatives, that place these labels. It's the people usually who don't have a bit of creativity in them at all, but profit from it, that set up all of this divisiveness. Yeah. Yeah, you know, in that sense, to follow up, is it time for new leadership to just kind of take over in music because music has changed and it's and, inevitable, and, and some of the ideas are dated. It's inevitable. In a sense. It's inevitable because nothing lasts forever, and the cast of characters damn sure don't last forever. Yeah, you know. So, and I think now we live in such a radical period of time, like. You know, we have so many things that are going on and we have so many things that reach boiling points that need solutions. And then aside from that, we've all just been through this like cataclysmic experience of a pandemic, yeah. which uprooted everything yeah. we've known. It stopped the whole life. In a sense. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's changed how finances, it's changed how, you know, the labor force, it's changed culture, it's changed economics, it's it's just changed. Really just changed everything. Exactly. Through. So you, how can you expect the same people to be in play through all of these changes? Yeah, it's time to switch over. I, and I don't know. I won't say like I don't know that it's actually mm -hmm. time to be like, all right, old man, get the fuck up out of here. Like I don't. I won't say that. But I will say change is inevitable. It's all in what you decide to choose and how you're going to handle this change. Mm -hmm. Are you going to embrace it or are you going to be resentful? Mm -hmm. And that choice is up to the individual. You know, but it's inevitable. Great answer. Mike Geronimo. Appreciate it. Uh, Mike Geronimo, here in the Infamous Hour, we have a segment, uh, top five segment. We've done everything from top five fast food sandwiches to top five producers with bars. Y'all did fast food sandwiches? Yeah, we did That's fast lit. food. In, in, in the pandemic. For that in, in, in the pandemic. <laughs> Watch, we did. now I'm going to get like the, the humdrum rapper. Like, like, yeah. Well, well, no, so. believe, believe it or not, my top five fast food sandwich is the most watched episode of this whole time. I, I do it. believe it. Me, me and my wife in the living room, and we were taking live calls. People will call it in. Nah, fuck the Popeye sandwich. Fuck I this mean, sandwich. You, ate that, you had that chicken it's sandwich? I never trash. had one, though. It was bro. trash. It was highly overrated. It was garbage. <laughs> It was, it, it was garbage, but all right, top, I knew so, I was doing it right. So, so, right, so the top five segment for this is top five hip hop groups of all time. Shoot for it. Top five hip hop groups of all time. Groups of all time. Um, EPMD. Okay. Dog Pound. Ooh, ooh. Let's go. Locks. Yeah. Um, Goody Mob. Goody Mob. Yes. Um, See, he's covering the map. I like this top five so far. This might be the best one. Yeah, I, damn, and then when you get to the, the last one, it's hard because you're like, nah, don't say that. You're forgetting them. Yeah, damn. Wait, 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 oh, yeah, you could do five in an honorable mention. Um, I said some 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 pretty good ones. Though, good. Or, um, group. Is like YMCB considered a group? Like they can't because they kind of did all well, right. They, they, they dropped an album together, so I would say yeah. Mm, yeah, but that's not really a group. I, I, well, I no, nah, no, nah, I wouldn't say a label. It would be more like um, actual groups. Oh uh, God, I, I can't think past that because I said I, that's for a lot of people, right? <laughs> you yeah, you covered the map though very yeah. well. I got to four, so the fifth <laughs> shit. Look, I don't want to fuck it up and say something. <laughs> and then then y'all like what? They don't even fall in line with what you said. <laughs> um, hang on, give me a sec. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. I don't know. I like them, man. I'm sorry, and they just cave it up my head. <laughs> I gotta say, above the law, man. Oh, that's oh, clutch right like, there. I was in, I was into a lot of G shit. Yeah, so yeah. So I gotta go with above the law. I know that the niggas like what above the law. <laughs> I just said the locks, nigga. But yeah, I go there. I stay there. That, that was dope, Tom. My top five. Well, you got top five. <laughs> Not as good as that one. <laughs> Look, throw you now. You don't want to say your top five. Oh, don't man, like that tone. But I'm not the guest on the show. So <laughs> what? We all guests together. Yeah, oh, true. man. Tone, you my guest oh, right now. I'm, I'm Mike Geronimo's guest. <laughs> That's uh, what's up. I don't know. Uh, the firm. Damn, I 
Yo, wow. That's clutch. The, the firm. Wait. I, I you can do honorable mention. Yeah. Yeah. I get honorable mention, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Yo, firm. I'm so <laughs> firm. <laughs> And nature's like my brother, so I know when nature sees this, he gonna be like, "Really, bro? You couldn't remember the firm, bro?" <laughs> Yo, Nate, I love you, bro. Uh, oh, wow! Wait, two honorable brand. Damn, I'm gonna get killed in <laughs> Yo. Capone and Noriega dead, and bro. Mob Deep. See you dead. <laughs> so I have like, all right, wait, wait, time like out. Eight. You cheating? Right? Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Where's my eraser? Where's my eraser for the time? <laughs> Above the above the law, no disrespect, <laughs> but I gotta shove y'all down a little bit on the pile. <laughs> Mob Deep, Capone and Nori, and 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 the firm, the firm, and then above the law. But I'm taking full advantage of my my like old OG rap status. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's fair. fair. That's right. fair. So I took it's like three groups. I'm think, sorry about that. You, you got a top five because you, you said uh, you I, said one. I said the firm tribe. Yeah. Locks. Oh my God! The terror Squad. Terror Squad. Yeah. Come on, I love. The, I, I'm Hispanic. I gotta say Terror Squad, man. <laughs> By default. <laughs> By default, man. <laughs> and and you know what? Um, let's just go uh, Mob Deep. Cause Mob Deep. Uh, huge, Damn. Huge, you know, I, I didn't put any thought into this, and I'm going to answer these questions. Yeah. I would just off the top of my head, NWA. Okay. Wow. Um, Son, what are we doing? Uh, <laughs> NWA. No order, because I haven't thought about this. NWA. Run DMC, um, Mob Deep definitely. Mob Deep would probably be number one. They was just most influential to yeah, me. Said, being, being from being from New York, like yeah, I was, facts. I was for the Bronx. I wanted to be from Queens because now nah, it's true. But it's facts, it's facts, it's all yeah. facts. It's all That's the first the, I've the, never the heard a BS sound, dude sound, ever and, say that. Nah, and, and if you look at like if you look at like Pun's album, mm -hmm. Capital Punishment, that whole sound is based on. The Queen sound, like yeah. the whole sound. That's yeah. Ill. I'm gonna go listen. To yeah, Capital, Capital Punishment definitely the way the, the way you know obviously um no, have it got you know the the signature hi hat from Q Tip, mm -hmm. but that transferred over. Yeah, have is just a beast. Um, in so the that's rap. three, right? Um, yeah. Tribe Called Quest four, and um, man, I gotta think about five. Ain't the last one the hardest one? Five, yeah, right. Well, War Report is my favorite album of all time. You should just go with CNN, bro. <laughs> you, you should just go with CNN. Oh, man. You should um, just rock with CNN, bro. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with CNN for the, for yeah, the sake of it. Yeah, I'll go with CNN, yeah. I'll go with CNN. That's what's up. Uh, Mike Geronimo, thanks for coming to the Infamous House. So nah, we have thanks this for having single, me. We have this new single out now. Yes, um, And when are the fans are going to get the project? You'll get the entire project in fall of 2021. Okay. Yes. It's called 3016. Um, shout out YMVS. It's a new shampoo. Shampoo yeah. out here working. Shampoo. Boom. Boom. Me about shampoo is interesting because he does like old school groundwork. Yeah. Like he, he not really into so much the social media. Like I saw what he did for Buster album was crazy. The Billboard. Yeah, facts. Guys with the mask at Times Square. Yeah. That was tough. Shit, I call him Coach Customato. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So shout out to Customato, my old QMB team. The project's coming out on my label, QMB Inc. So I'm proud of that. Shout out to Symphonics. Octavius, I see you. Um, yeah, and for more info, you guys could go to the website, mm -hmm. which is www.mikegeronimomusic.com. You could go on my IG, it's at Mike Geronimo. My Twitter is real Mike Geronimo. My TikTok's real Mike Geronimo. <laughs> Am I leaving anything out? Any social app out? Oh, my Facebook, YouTube. You YouTube yeah. that we have the, the the channel so there'll be plenty of info out there but I'm excited I cannot wait I have a lot of surprises nice. no I'm not telling y'all who they are yet <laughs> but I have a lot of shit that's gonna have people like yo what yeah, the, the fans are definitely yeah. excited to hear yeah. it on Tone social media if they wanna follow you yo hit me up I'm across all platforms at tone.viera t-o-n-e dot v-i-e-r-a Right, of course, I'm the infamous Simon Davis. This is the infamous hour every single Thursday. Boom Bap Nation, Facebook, Roku, and all our channels. Listen to me on Sirius XM Shade 45 every single Thursday. Give you that real classic hip-hop vibe. We have an amazing lineup coming up next. We have Jojo Pellegrino. We have Jazz O to follow. We're going to talk about his new record with Nipsey Hussle. And make sure you tap in and follow the, the, the podcast and iHeartRadio and much more. Till next time, stay free and stay COVID-19 safe. See yes, you. Yes, sir. Peace.